Hello and welcome to our preview of this year's Green Network Summit, part of our year-round DSP leaders coverage. I'm Guy Daniels and this is the fourth year of the summit where we investigate how telcos are reducing the power demands of their networks and improving energy use, which has now become a business imperative for them to achieve profitable future growth. And as always, we bring you a mix of panel discussions, analysis and insights from our partners. These programmes will be available to watch on demand from 7am UK time each morning of the summit. We then bring you our live Q&A programmes, one per day, streaming live from 4pm UK time. So watch the videos, send in your questions and then settle back for the live show. Well, let's take a detailed look at the agenda for the Green Network Summit and give you a little taste of what to expect. Day one starts on Tuesday the 4th of February and our first panel discussion of the summit looks at how to improve network energy efficiency with AI. And given that energy costs make up about 23% of a telco's network OPEX, can AI applications help network operators to improve the energy efficiency of their networks? And if so, how? Well, to address the key issue here, we have panelists from Telefonica, Colt Technology, Juniper Networks and Luth Computer. We recorded the panel last week and here's a sneak peek for you. I had the opportunity to work with, uh, to work with some colleagues that were making uh, um, um, work on AI to optimize, not to optimize the use of the network, but to optimize the amount of energy that we were spending with the, with the track roles when attending, um, uh, uh, dealing with uh, incidents at uh, customers' uh, premises. And it was, a, it was an amazing amount of, uh, of, uh, of energy that we were saving. In forms probably of fuel for the, uh, for the trucks and the, uh, and the vans, but it was, we were saving energy as well. So the, the idea is that uh, I think that uh, right now we have, we, or we, we have AI systems that are being applied here and there for different, uh, for different uh, activities that are mostly uh, focused on, on assessing uh, decisions that are taken by, by engineers and planners. Still, we, we still lack the, the uh, point in which we, we take the, follow, the following step of making, making AI more part of the, uh, of the control at, to, at the top of, the, of certain control loops and trying to understand this. We have a very complex uh, network and actually it spans multiple countries and you, I'm sure everybody is aware of the price of uh, energy is being uh, heavily dependent on the type of uh, power plants you have and uh, it can vary quite quite a lot country by country. There are actually some very large differences. Sometimes it's twice as much expensive uh, kilowatt per hour in a certain country compared to another one. So we have, we have and again, with our complexity, we have multiple options from go, going from A to B for setting up uh, network routes. For ourselves and uh, for internal use, I mean operations and also exposing that uh, to customers. So we have the ability to create a green path that uh, doesn't necessarily mean the shortest possible path, uh, but, but is actually the, the most energy efficient path. It may not be, again, necessarily the lowest possible consumption of energy, but more the actual, again, lowest possible uh, spend uh, based on, uh, on, on the path that you choose. So I'm currently working with a, a group with the Open Infra uh, Foundation, we're, uh, the EDGE Working Group. We're working on a white paper on this topic. Uh, should be out in a couple months. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's so what what is immediately apparent um, with, uh, you know, with our initial conversations is just how complex the issue is. And um, I think it's a good use for AI. Um, because there's multiple variations and variables uh, and factors, you know, as, as Mirko and Diego both mentioned, uh, that go into uh, optimizing the network for energy efficiency, but also balancing that with, uh, you know, making sure the network is available um, at the same time. I mean, 
Uh, a lot of um, data centers, um, you know, uh, cloud applications optimize their energy efficiency by um, tracking the usage and then just turning turning machines off for and then spinning them up uh, when they're needed. But uh, telco usage um, doesn't really follow that same very predictable path, uh, so it, it requires a lot more. Um, understanding of the variables. And uh, that's where the, you know, AI can help um, with the decision-making process. I see lots of our customers using AI on things like configuration management. So we see many times, you know, customers saying, hey, we, you know, our power utilization is high. And we, we, we go and look and, and do some audit work. And we find that often customers haven't turned those power saving features on. And that, it, that, that in itself is something very simple to, to fix, very simple to do. And we're encouraging our customers to, to use AI as a way of managing configurations and changes, and, but also looking at how we optimize those configurations to get the most out of the network. And at 4 p.m. UK time, it's our live Q&A broadcast. Please, if you want to ask a question, do send it in nice and early. We receive a lot of questions for our live shows, so the more interesting your question, the greater the chance of it getting onto the show. Well, day two follows on Wednesday the 5th of February, the second and final day of our online event. And we have a panel discussion that looks at the benefits of building a green RAN. The radio access network accounts for about 75% of the total network energy usage for a mobile operator, with the radio units accounting for the vast majority of that. So how can vendors and operators reduce this huge power budget? Well, we have panelists from Deutsche Telekom, Docomo Eurolabs, Appledore Research, and the Open Networking Foundation. And here's another brief preview for you. Historically speaking, with each generation of um, the radio networks, we have seen um, higher efficiencies and the supplies worse to the radio units. Um, and actually, there are several strategies that are implemented to improve the energy efficiency of that. Um, if we start from the hardware side in itself, so we will see that um, we have now the design of the power efficient chipsets uh, more efficient power amplifiers and other components, which bring down the overall power consumption. From the software point of view, if we see that um, radio units can dynamically adjust their power output based on real-time traffic demands, for example, during peak hours, um, the transmit power and the active component can be scaled down while still uh, maintaining the customer experience. Um, we have also seen in the 4G and 5G the different types of sleep modes, um, for example, deep sleep, where most RF and the baseband components of the radio units are turned off during the low traffic period, or micro sleep TX. This is another example to turn off the transmission components for a very, very short uh, duration, like somewhere in the millis milliseconds or something. It's not just only about the capabilities that are being uh, nowadays specified and implemented in terms of uh, being capable to switch off and on uh, the component carriers and the RF bands, um, either selectively, some of them or all of them, but also the capabilities that are being defined to uh, change the configuration of the radio frequencies. And here, for example, uh, some of the latest advancements uh, consider uh, making reselection of the transmission and the reception arrays, or also uh, being capable to change the MIMO configurations or the SBB blocks uh, for the synchronization or even uh, changing the uh, transmission power of the uh, radio units. And that together with the uh, specification of the sleep modes that has already been introduced uh, can also bring up uh, a lot more um, benefits in terms of energy efficiency, um, also uh, potentially uh, making uh, savings in energy consumption. Both uh, near Arctic and non Arctic are critical to, you know, I mean, they're important for energy saving. They play some role. There's no contest about it. But you need to, I need to bring in the aspect of ORAN adoption here. If you look at the interfaces, the non Arctic 
is interfacing with RAN using an you know, uh, interface called O1, and which is fairly advanced. And the other one in, for near arterial is E2, which is still not matured. So if you want to get some benefits out of, uh, you know, if you want to get some immediate benefit in energy savings, and you go for um, uh, uh, on off uh, cell uh, complete, uh, sorry, the the node on off, you could achieve that uh, with non arteric is much faster because of the maturity of the interface. And also you could um, do some adapters to the own interface and and and, uh, and, and uh, interface that with the uh, outside traditional RAN through the EMS. We have done that and uh, we have some, uh, uh, some uh, quite a bit of data to, to prove that's a viable option. I think the, the, the key technology to getting this right is operational automation. It's the ability to put automation on top of this, to be able to automate change, to be able to automate change in um, functionality, um, software, etc., software, software distribution, um, and increasingly to be able to automate and um, put put in in place autonomy within the rand it ran the rand runs itself to a set of intents those will be those will be key to getting this energy efficiency right because unless you can do that change be trust that change repeatedly that change it's very difficult to see how some of this stuff will actually be taken beyond the science lab and taken into the um, um, the scale and scale network and at 4 p.m. UK time, it's our final live Q&A broadcast. We'll be joined by more of our panellists who are going to answer as many of your questions as they can. Well, that's a preview of the programmes we have in store for you, but we are also running our viewer poll. And we do this for every summit, and we're always amazed by the number of responses we get from you. This is the question we are asking. How can telcos most effectively reduce their energy consumption levels? There are seven answer choices. Just select whichever ones you think are the most important. And you can cast your votes now. It's up and live. Don't leave it too late. And we'll take a look at the progress of the voting during our live Q&A shows. Then the week after, I'll be joined by my colleague Ray Lemaitre, Editorial Director at Telecom TV, for a special Extra Shot programme. Ray will present his analysis of the poll results and the two of us will discuss the highlights of the panels and interviews and bring together the major themes and outcomes. Don't forget to register at Telecom TV to view the summit videos. There's no charge. Join our community and be part of our ongoing DSP leaders coverage. And I hope to see you for the Green Network Summit starting Tuesday, the 4th of February. Goodbye for now.